Yo, this is DJ DLS. I would just like to share with you guys my experience so far experimenting with QLC+. QLC+, is a free software from Massimo. You can just go to the URL qlcplus.org and download the version that will work for you. In my case, I am using version 4.11.2. Because I've experimented with the later versions, but so far, this version 4.11.2 works for me the best. You will also need a DMX to USB device. In my case, I'm using the USB to DMX 512 controller. Got it from Lazada. It's from RNS Corp, I think. Yeah, not from overseas. He's a Filipino maker, I think. He's using the Entech chip for his uh, 3D printed case. It's a pretty solid build, what he did. You can immediately notice that it's really homemade from the user guide that he gives you and the box that it comes in. It's really a makeshift box, but it works really well, both on the Mac and the PC. And it's much more stable and it doesn't give you lag, unlike the previous USB to DMX uh, controller that I had, the UDMX, that gave me really horrible feedback uh, whenever I'd use software to control my fixtures or my lights. I also experimented with Freestyler DMX, but I couldn't get it to work. So right now, I'm sticking with Q-Light Controller Plus instead. When you first open QLC Plus, this is what you'll see, a, a blank space. Then you'll first have to configure your I.O. In, go to Inputs and Outputs tab at the bottom here on the extreme right. And then in my case, the USB to DMX is identified as DMX USB Device 1 USB Serial with only an output that you can check. Select the universe that you'll be using it on. If you want multiple universes, you'd, you'll have to get more DMX to USB adapters. But in my case, since I only have very few fixtures to play with, one universe should be more than enough. Here I have four Big Dipper LP001 PAR lights or PAR LEDs. The two on the right have their green LEDs dying on me so far. <laughs> I have Big Dipper Magic Disco Balls on the extreme left and right, Big Dipper Moving Heads on the bottom left and right, and U-King Mini Moving Heads, the two moving heads at the center, at the bottom center. After you've configured your I.O. here, then you can proceed to add your fixtures. I had to create all the fixture files for my lights because it wasn't on the default list of QLC+. Plus. Well, let's save that for uh, another tutorial on how to input your existing generic lights so you can use them here. So now you can add your fixtures, your custom fixtures, by clicking the plus button. This window will pop up where you can select the lights that you've created. In my case, I've done the Big Dipper Mini Moving Heads and the uh, U-King Mini Moving Head, the uh, Magic Disco Ball, the PAR LEDs, and that's it. So let's play with the PARs first. I will add this. You can input the, the addresses that you set here. In my case, I listed them all down. The numbers on the left represent the buttons on the DMX512 physical controller. And these are the addresses that have been assigned to the fixtures and I know that I assigned buttons 7, 8, 9 and 10 for the Big Dipper LP001 PAR LEDs so now we can assign 97, 113, 129 and 145 for those four PARs so first address 97 the numbers are in increments of 16 so don't be confused about that it's pretty easy once you understand it so that's my first bar right here and then we're going to add the next three add it again one one three next would be one two nine and the last one would be 145 so now we have our four bars here on the right you can see the description these are all the stuff that we've inputted using the fixture creator that came with QLC+. And if you wanted to input more information, it's really up to you. 
So now we can start testing our controls. There is a button at the bottom called Simple Desk where you can see all the, the sliders from the fixtures that you've added. If you want to compress this very wide slider uh, reel right here, you just press this button here, View Mode. And then these are all the channels that are associated with each lighting fixture that we've added so far. So we have the fade here and then the red. So you can see the reds already there. And then we can just slide up the others. Just so you know that it's working. As I've mentioned before, the two parts on the right have their green LEDs dying on me. I'll show you. The third one has some of its green LEDs still working. But on the last one, on the right, all the green LEDs are dead. But the blue ones work though, I think. They're still complete. Right now, we're just going to be playing with the red. Let's see if the strobe works. There, the strobe's working. Strobe here's working. Everything's working. If you want to just stop everything, you just click this X button right here. Reset the universe. All the sliders will be reset. Now we can start our first scene. So you go to functions and then create a new scene. After creating a new scene, you can add your fixtures here under the general tab. We can add all of this. And then if say we want a red scene, click on the squares here. Only click the ones that you need. Like in our case, if we want just the red turned on, we will just click on the master dimmer and the red channel. And there you go. We have one red light up there. And then we can copy this. Click on copy current values to clipboard and then paste it here on the next one. Or you can just click this, copy current values to all fixtures. So you'll have all of it. So it makes it a lot easier than using the physical board. That's our first scene. Now we can name that maybe parse red. So that's one. So now we can just clone this if we want to create a blue scene we can just rename this right away blue and then just go to the first one tim the red okay uncheck it go to blue put the slider to full and then earlier we did this copy all values to Copy, copy current values to all fixtures. So now we have all blue. So far we have parse red as a scene and parse blue. From here we can already create a chase. So now let's add a white, a white scene. Let's clone this again. White. And then turn off red. Uncheck that. Turn on white and then copy all to copy all current values to all fixtures. And then there you go. It's so easy to use, right? Versus the physical board that we used to have. So now from here we can create a chase. So let's create a new chase by clicking this button right here. We can name it uh, parse chase 001. So what we can do here is we can add the all the scenes that we've created and we can play we can test and play this now. Sure. Right now it's set to really really fast so you can click this time or clock icon and then you can just tap to the beat or whatever speed you want or you can set the duration physically like in seconds here like we can set it to one second and now it will change every one second <clears throat> or we can tap it again to the beat if there's music right now it's just cutting in and out if you want to add a fade in or a fade out you can just turn these so now we can just set a fade, fade in, set a fade out. So right now it's fading in and out. It's pretty cool, right? 
we can also experiment on other things like since we have all these fixtures we can now put them in a group add fixture to new group par parse once you create the parse group double click on that and you will be given this uh, layout right now uh, the width is two pixels and the height is two pixels but our layout our physical layout is in one row the parts are in one row so let's set the width to four that would give us a grid of four and since it's just one row let's set the height to just one oops undo four uh, let's just lay it out first according to their numbers from lowest to high let's see if that works the address numbers and then now we can set the height to one so now we just have one line of parse let's go back to functions and then the color matrix right here so right now you, you can see the animation here it's just one line now let's test it now we didn't need to manually set that animation anymore man makes life really easy so from here we can create a lot of different color matrix patterns so that we can use them together later with other animations from our other fixtures we, we can also set blend modes like maybe from red we can set red to blue maybe let's see what happens so now it's blending its colors from red to blue that's pretty cool right it will take you a lot of time just to set those manually and this is just making your life a lot easier so we can do other things here like maybe there's a my one of my favorite series gradient there where you can set but since our green leds on the two parts on the right are dead then it it kind of doesn't really work but you can see the effect let's tap in make it faster make the fade times longer fill in from center there you go that's pretty cool i guess so there you go we have two rgb matrix sets now later on you can add these to collections with other fixture animations that you might have created the sets the collections the chases that we've created earlier are here that i've created are here i've had different rgb matrix animations for the parse for example right here i've also created different motion animations for the moving heads here different sets for the moving heads like building blocks positions for the for the moving heads also and then you can add them to collections here i have different different elements i have an rgb matrix i have a chase or i have a scene i have a chase and i have a sequence for the animation let's see what this is there it is so after you've done all all the building blocks for your show or for your party you can go to virtual console and then you can create buttons now let me show you how to create one of these buttons just click on outside of any box here just click on the gray area here add button right now this button doesn't do anything double click on it and then uh, across function you can choose what function you want it to do you can choose one of the themes i've created i think it's under collections you can check and check whatever you want to appear or not appear once you're done assigning a function to the button you will still be on edit mode once you exit that menu you're still able to move things around click play and then the buttons are now activated so if i press this button now effects theme one will activate why is it not working okay let's choose a different one then how about this parse all mh rainbow that should work maybe i did something to that older collection there you go so now it works
if you box things up like this or group things up like this, it also has different parameters or restrictions for each box. You'll discover that or you, you can just read the online manual from Massimo from the website. I'm just showing you what I've done so far here and I hope you're able to learn something from this very quick tutorial. This is just a quick overview of what I've done so far, my progress so far with QLC+. Again, I've grouped the motion in one box here. All, my, all the motions I've created. And the next box is labeled color where I put RGB matrix sets here. And this one are actual collections or sets that can just be triggered while you're DJing. If you're too busy to fool around with the other buttons, you just choose one of these buttons and you're good to go. I still haven't experimented on the audio triggering. Maybe I can make a video of that uh, one of these days. Also, I will try to do a video on the fixture creator very soon. So if you guys have generic fixtures, you can create your own file so that you can use it in QLC+. I guess that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. My name is DJ DLS. Peace.